Good evening, everybody. We're talking to you here from our hotel in London. The delegation has just arrived here in the United Kingdom ahead of tomorrow's Euro 2020 semi final. I'm joined by Luis Enrique currently, and soon we will hear from Pedri. Please use the application to ask your question. We'll start with Cadena Cope. Please. Hola, mister. Buenas noches. Miguel Ángel Díaz. Good evening, coach. First of all, good luck for tomorrow. I wanted to ask if Laporte trained. Do you think that you will need to make a few changes based on tiredness or fitness? Apart from Sarabia, is everyone available? Good afternoon. Laporte didn't train yesterday, but that wasn't due to any specific reason. It was simply about uh, recovery, and they decided just to stick on the bikes inside. They're all fit to play, but of course Pablo Sarabia isn't here with us. The rest of the team are in good shape physically. When you are on the brink of playing a semi-final, tiredness disappears. Everyone wants to be involved tomorrow. Next question, please. How important was it for you to get through the quarterfinals? You've never been involved in a semi final as a player apart from the Olympic Games. So, what are your sensations right now in the semi finals? Well, it's impossible to uh, understate this. It's. Uh, fantastic news um, because we obviously not an experienced national team so getting the experience of getting through the quarterfinals in the way that we did uh, deserving to do so I did think we deserved to get through before the penalty shootout that's obviously hugely important and you can't overstate that what we are doing now is focusing on the game tomorrow focusing on the huge opportunity we have tomorrow opportunity to compete in a final so they will have plenty of time to think about it and take stock but for now we have a great uh, objective ahead of us and we need to be at a hundred percent next question from Diario Yas please good evening coach and good luck for the game tomorrow Italy also play a possession game. They're similar in stats to Spain, who obviously dominate possession. Do you think Italy will be able to get the ball off us? And do you think they'll be able to do that if that is indeed their objective? Well, I think that's one of the main questions, really. We are leaders, as you say, in terms of possession stats, but they too are a side that can use the ball and enjoy their football with the ball. Therefore, I guess that's the first battle to win. I think that they are very good without the ball too. They've done that at times during the championship. But I think they are more comfortable with the ball. Our objective is clear. We need the ball. We want to have it. If we had to play a different game, we'd adapt. But of course, we'd prefer to have possession of the football. Next question from El Mundo, please. Buenas tardes. Good evening, first of all. I wanted to ask you, what role has the hunger of your team played so far? You were saying that you really don't have that much experience at international level, and that usually is replaced by hunger. To what extent has that hunger played a key role throughout these championships? Thank you. Well, I haven't seen that characteristic hunger. I've seen a player, a group of players 
concentraciones han venido con, con mucha ilusión. That uh, ever since the start of the training camp, camp they've shown real desire to win a place in the team. I don't know whether it's a question of hunger. I think it's a question of good attitude, and all good teams have that. I think in terms of what we have tried to do, it is celebrating the good qualities that we have, and trying to neutralize the weaknesses and ensure that they aren't seen as much as possible and to generate a good team environment. I think hunger is more associated with your desire of achieving something big and all national teams want to do that, of course. Next question from Cadena Ser, please. Good evening, coach. Since the, your first game in Wembley, you've always said that this is a family and that your goal was to be involved in a big game in this legendary stadium. What role has the Federation played the president too. How important is it to have that support from the Federation and the president for this group of players? Because of course it will be a success of uh, three years, not three weeks. Well of course when I accepted the offer from the Spanish Federation it was because I was convinced by the president and the sporting director there's no need to, uh, for me to say again about how fantastic I feel here. I've always felt that support from the directors. So it's a pleasure to have been able to represent Spain as a player and it's a pleasure to do so as a coach. I have a contract that runs until after the World Cup and I'm pleased to be here. I feel great support behind me too. Fernando Burgos from Onda Cero, please. Next question. Can you hear me? Looking back to that match in Wembley on in September 2018. It's nearly three years since that and you're back at Wembley. Do you think you're a better coach than you were then? And could you tell us a little bit about the process of evolution between the two games? Well, I think it's better for others to judge me. I don't have any opinion on that. I'm very relaxed in terms of the work I'm doing. I try to give 100% in everything I do, and I'm surrounded by fantastic people, and that's uh, very lucky for me. Uh, my collaborators make a huge contribution, and that's very important. So, in terms of whether I'm a better coach, I would just say I am who I am. And of course, I want to continue improving and achieving more things. Many players have changed, of course, and that, I think, was what I said on the day I was unveiled as Spanish coach. Of course, players change regardless of their names and the clubs they played for and that's what I have tried to do throughout my time as Spanish national coach. Ramon Hernández from Radio Nacional. Seems to be a problem with Ramon's connection there. So we'll go with Miguel Ángel Torivia of Radio Marca for the next question. Dino Baggio has been speaking to the press and has said that if Spain win the Euros, it will be down to you. Therefore, he's uh, saying that you are more important than the players. Would you agree with the notion that you are the leader and that if Spain do win, it will be your victory? 
Well, I'd have to say no. Of course, I'm a leader. I've always said that. But I don't enter the pitch. The important people are those that enter the pitch and those that... We have plenty of leaders in, in my team. The difficult thing is to press well, score goals, be attentive to runs, and we have plenty of players that can do that. If we are lucky enough to get through to the final, it will be down to the players. Next question, please. Good evening, coach. I wanted to ask you about the following. In the round of 16, you trained the day before the game at the stadium, uh, but today you haven't, and you didn't in the previous round either. Could you explain that decision, please? Well, it's very simple. We weren't able to do so in order to preserve the pitch. There have been plenty of games here in Wembley. Same thing in Copenhagen. We weren't able to train on the day before the game. It's a shame because that's always a great training session for the players. But at the same time, we understand that the priority is maintaining and looking after the quality of the pitch. Next question from Goal, please. We've just come from the Italy's, Italy squad's training session. Both Bonucci and Chiellini were involved in the team. Are you going to be focusing on what Italy do in training? They're very important players really experienced, but I don't pick my team based on this kind of information. What I'm focused on is what I can control in terms of our starting lineup, in terms of what we want to achieve on the pitch. Of course, I'd like to... I would love for Spinazzola to be involved tomorrow, but I'm sure that the more good players that are on the pitch, the better it is for the game of football. Next question, please. I wanted to ask you about the importance of Laporte within the team. He's the only defender who has played in every game for you. How important is he? Well, as soon as he was able to play with us, he began to do a huge amount for us. He's a top defender, both in the attacking and defensive phases. We obviously need our defenders to have composure in order to bring the ball out and pick up that free man within the midfield line. He is strong in the air, he can play with both feet, he is uh, physically strong, he's quick, he's strong as I've already said, he is good at playing on the front foot, he is good with his covering play, so he's a top defender and we are delighted that Emmerich has decided to play for Spain. Next question please. Good evening, coach. In terms of the mental side of things, how do you approach the game? Of course, it's an important game for the players, great stadium in Wembley. How are you going to prepare the team mentally for this game? Well, we have Joaquin Valdez, our psychologist, with us. And we always speak to the players ahead of these games and we always talk about the importance of having that motivation that you need for these games. Sometimes there's a tendency to be overexcited and we want to avoid that, of course. We want to head into the game the same way we did the third group game, which was a must-win game for us. We want to use the same approach we did throughout the knockout stages. Of course, I always say to the players, focus on what you can control on the field of play, which is... Uh, your movement, your positioning, the movement in attack and defence, and try to block out the rest. 
that would be fantastic for them of course of course we're not an experienced team but that doesn't mean we don't have that experience in the game because many of our players have played at a very high level abroad so they're used to these games but of course you're representing a whole country in one of these games so that's a very exciting prospect but I hope that we are up to the challenge and that we can give the fans something to shout about. Ramon Hernandez from Radio Nacional, please. Next question. Still got the same problem there with Ramon. Javier Cáceres. Next question from you, Javier. Hola, Mr. Um... Good evening there, coach. I wanted to ask you about the stadium. It's going to be 60,000 fans at Wembley. All of them are going to be British. And coincidentally, the British government has just announced that all of the restrictions are going to be lifted very soon. What do you make of the fact that none of uh, the fans from Italy or Spain will be able to travel for the game? And the same question looking ahead to the final, of course. It's a possibility that England will go through and, of course, they will be with lots of fans within the stadium. Well, I think regardless of those factors, it's a situation which is strange, of course. I hope that there are Italians and Spanish in the stadium tomorrow, more than they are Englishmen. But it's one of those things that we can't control, so we're not going to uh, spend even an ounce of energy thinking about that. We accept it. We'd love it for it. We love for it to be different, but there's not much else we can say about that. We're going to move on to some Italian journalists. Tutto mercato, please first. Salve, Mister. Se posso chiedere in italiano. Good evening. If I can ask you this in Italian, good to see you. Do you think you can get your own back on uh, Italian football? Do you think that Italian football didn't necessarily have much patience with you in terms of your ability? Salve. No, 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 questa impressione. Good evening. No, I don't think that's the case at all. If you remember, I decided to actually leave the club. Roma wanted me to actually stay at the club. But I made the decision to leave. So that means that I've got nothing to prove. I'm delighted to come up against Italy. It's a country that I'm very fond of. And whenever I have a bit of free time, I always like to visit Italy. And it's lovely to come up against the Azzurri. We will play them tomorrow night. And we will also face them in October in the Nations League Final Four. And so it's always nice to meet them. Creo que te hemos perdido. Vamos con Daniel en lo Mónaco del Romanista. Adelante. Es un encantado de verte. Te, te haré la pregunta en italiano. Daniel, ¿cómo estás? Eh, <laughs> muy bien, gracias. Muy bien. Daniel, ¿cómo estás? Muy bien, gracias. Muy bien, presentado a Roma. It was a decade ago when you were unveiled at Roma. We were all a bit younger then. And I wanted to ask you the following. You just said that you don't know if you're necessarily a better coach, but I wanted to know whether what you thought back then about football is what you're still doing today, and obviously you've achieved a great deal since then. This might be something that you're missing, obviously, making the final with Spain. And will it be nice to see Daniele De Rossi tomorrow night? Absolutely, it'll be wonderful to see Daniele tomorrow night. I've uh, spoken to him on the phone. That was two or three weeks ago. 
and I'll be delighted to uh, once again see him. We were indeed uh, a lot younger a decade ago, that's for sure. But we've always been trying to improve upon the attacking brand of football that we showed in Roma. That's my footballing philosophy. I'm always trying to improve on that score. If we were to win tomorrow night, that would be big news for all of us. However, if Italy come out on top, and if they are worthy winners, then of course I will be cheering on the Azzurri in the final. We're going to move on with Liverpool Echo. Next question. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Enrique. Um, just wanted to ask you about uh, Thiago Alcantara's role in the squad. Obviously, earlier you said um, your side wants to play lots of possession football, and he's one of the best passers in world football. Um, he finished the season strongly with Liverpool, but for you, he's been more of a, a substitute player. So it's just wondering if you could explain your thinking behind his role in the squad and how important he is. Well, Thiago is a very good uh, player. You you know and everybody knows about his uh, quality. But we are a strong team and I try to, to give them uh, minutes and he's helping a lot uh, the squad because uh, he's an experienced player and we are uh, very happy to have him in the, in the squad. After that, I have to decide and and my decisions speaks much better than me. Vamos acabando Kieran Canning. Hola, buenas tardes. Eh, todo el mundo recuerda el codazo de Tesotti a ti en el 94. Everyone remembers that famous elbow from Tesotti many years ago. No, no, por favor. Do you have a, a, a little bit of unfinished business with Italy? No, no, not at all. That was so long ago. I've been able to speak with him a few year, few times over the years, and he's a very honest guy, a good person. Right now, he's working as the assistant coach uh, with Shevchenko at Ukraine. We've spoken a few times, but that's in the past, part of our footballing history, of course. Both of us, I'm sure, would have preferred that had gone differently. But there's nothing more to say. We're focused on playing. And as I've said, I have wonderful memories of my time in Italy, of the Italian people. So this is a, a wonderful semi-final, Italy versus Spain. One of the two is going to be in the final, and that's really all there is to say. That's a part of footballing history. Good evening. I wanted to ask about your relationship with the players. In interviews, they've said that you have a great relationship with them and you're very close to them. To be honest, that's not the image we had of you when you were the Barcelona coach. Do you feel you have a greater affinity with the players here with Spain? I've always been that kind of close coach. I love having that close relationship with my players. In fact, it's one of my favourite things about the role. I try to live vicariously through the youth of my players and try to transmit my footballing philosophy towards them. Perhaps you should not ask players about their current coach because obviously they all want to play. They want me to pick them. Perhaps you should ask them about me when I'm not their coach anymore. Maybe they'll say something a little bit more real. Last question from As, please. Good evening, coach. I wanted to ask you about the fact that the stats say that Italy's biggest strength is their central areas and that they're perhaps a little bit more vulnerable down the flanks. 
Spain seemed to be strongest down the flanks. Have you focused on that at all within your preparations? And have you got a rabbit to pull out of your hat in terms of attacking Italy down their flanks? Well, all national teams keep players in central areas and uh, as a rule there are, there's a lot more space down the flanks. That happens in every game, in every knockout game. Of course, we're going to try to use our play in order to make the pitch as wide as possible and cause them as many problems as possible. But of course, the uh, central corridor is the quickest way to the goal. Whether it is down the flanks or through the middle, at the end of the day, it is about uh, controlling the ball, moving well, and that's designed to create uh, lapses in attention within the defence. But I think it's a, a very normal thing in football to have uh, the numbers blocked down the middle. We're going to have another try with Rafael. Here he is. You can hear me now, can you not? Good evening, coach. First of all, I wanted to ask you the following. Italy play quite a similar brand of football to Spain. Have you come up with a plan B, something that you would do if Italy were able to dominate the possession game? Well, I'm sure that there will be times during the game that we'll have to defend, perhaps more than we have done in previous matches, but I hope um, that that's not the case. Of course, uh, coaches try to adapt to all circumstances. We prefer to stick to our philosophy, stick to our guns. When I see a team that is capable of taking the ball off us, we will have to adapt. If Italy do that tomorrow, of course we have a plan B and we know what to do in those circumstances and how to overcome that. But of course I'm not going to publicise that here. But of course it's not about changing the system or anything like that. We have a very well developed brand of football. I think it's generating good results and the players have really bought into that. And I think that is gives me plenty of assurances in terms of continuing to stick to that style.